Dickerson, Nicholas Harry Callis, and we have new information about George Pickens. From a man that we trust, from a newspaper that has stood the test of time, and that is Ray Fittipaldo of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, a Steelers insider for us here on 93.7 The Fan. And Ray has reported that a source told the Post-Gazette George Pickens has shown up late for work on multiple occasions this season. Oh, Doran. Mm. Oh, Doran. Perhaps a theme of today's show is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yes. Pirates get Paul Skeens, and you know what? It was exciting every fifth day. They still didn't make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Steelers have new offensive coordinator, new quarterback. They're only averaging one more point per game than they were last year. Uh The more things change, the more they stay the same. The Penguins. Power play stunk. Bad start to the game. Goaltenders just out to lunch. Yep. That ain't going to change. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And, hey, the Steelers have a maligned wide receiver showing up late. Causing problems on the field, causing problems off the field. And my read on this, Doran, is if Jerry Dulac were reporting that Pickens had arrived late, to a couple of work-related things that it would be coming from ownership or it would be coming from Mike Tomlin or above. That Ray Fittipaldo reports this tells me that when he's in the locker room, guys are pulling him aside off the record and letting him know exactly what's going on with George Pickens. Mm -hmm. I think Pickens' teammates might be putting on a brave face and all credit in the world goes to our guy Pat Fryermuth for yesterday defending his teammate. That's the right thing to do. For sure. But... Enough guys, I think, are pissed that they're going to reporters such as Ray and letting it be known this guy has been a problem. That That is the absolute right thing to do by Pat Fryermuth, and kudos on him. But um, that, that wears on you after a while. Sure. And you don't want to have to answer for somebody else. The last thing you want to do as a player is have to answer questions about somebody else's situation or somebody else because we're all grown men in that locker room. I don't want to have to talk about you, and I don't want you to have to talk about me. I should be able to talk about me, and you should be able to talk about you. Um, that was the right thing by Pat, but the next time, Pat's going to be like, okay, well, all right. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's a young guy, and, you know, he's a talented guy, and, you know, we, we, you know we, we're, we're pulling for him. The next time, all right, like, I've had enough. Yeah. I've had enough. And that's the right thing to say, but that doesn't mean that that mentality and that feeling and that thought process isn't happening right now with some of his teammates looking and seeing that he shows up late while everybody is there uh, putting in the work. That, you know, and you know how I feel about stuff like that. When people are late, when people don't show effort, I talk about, you know, even my kids. Like, that's the main thing I talk, talk to them about every single day. You can control your effort. Everything else, I don't care. I don't care if you drop passes. I don't care if you, uh, you know, miss a three-pointer. I don't care if you strike out. But is your effort 100%? Because everything else will, will happen. Everything else will fall in place if you can control your effort. And that's how, the, that's how sports are playing. That's how life is. And other people are relying on you in sports. Other people are relying on you in business. And I have, if I have to rely on you and you're not taking it as serious as yeah. I am, then there's an issue. Yep. And there always will be an issue for at least successful people. People that are at, in that locker room are, pro- are, are, are successful. Every one of them. And they, there's only one way to do it. There really is at the end of the day. It's everybody pulls their weight. Because if there's one weak link, then you will lose. That's just how it is. And if you don't want to, if nobody wants to hear that or believe that, I don't know what to tell you. But if there's one little weak link in anything, you will lose. Everything has to be buttoned up. And as his teammate, like, you know, it's – you almost don't even want to talk to him. You want to have him figure it out because if he can't figure it out himself and he needs talking to, that's even worse than him just showing up. Like, if I have to go talk to you, if Pat Fryer has to, has to sit down with George, that's even worse. Like, you don't have this figured out by now in year three. This is the NFL. We're trying to win football games. And you're showing up late? Get the uh, – I mean, as a teammate, I'd be furious right now. For sure. Absolutely, and that's why I think it got to Ray. Uh huh. Because they don't want to put him on blast publicly. You don't want to put your name, your no. face behind it. The best Steelers teams didn't handle it that way, and I do think there's an issue of leadership on this team because George Pickens is one of your best players. There's no doubt about that. He's certainly one of your best talents. 
And Antonio Brown would show up late to stuff, but when he'd be there, he would bust his ass. On the practice field, after games, the way he ate, the way he put things into his body, that guy was serious about being a great football player. He was. Maybe show up late to meetings a time or two and to events. Yeah, but life is crazy, though, too, because, like, there are exceptions. There are exceptions for guys like that, and that's just how it is. And, and I mean, it's not... You know, it's not something that you want to, you know, hang your hat on of, of having exceptions for people. But there are some, some people that are really good at what they do. And you know that they will show up whenever the time is needed. So sometimes you just are like, all right, well, you know, hey, is he going to be on the practice field? And is he going to be able, is he getting covered? Is he scoring touchdowns? Okay, fine. And that's Antonio Brown. That's not George Pickens. No, he's got a goose egg in a touchdown column. Right. Antonio Brown had 1,848 yards, I'm pretty sure, Yeah, one season. You'd be like, okay. I think that's fine. Well, oh, whatever AB is doing, working for him, it's working for us. It's helping us when we're going to deal with it. You also, at that time and before that, when the Steelers were <gasps> playing in and winning Super Bowls, you had your best players also be the leaders. Yep. Like Joey Porter. Yep. Jerome Bettis. Hines. Heinz Ward, Paul Paul Malu, Paul Amalu, yeah. Alan Fanica, Heath Miller, and the list goes on and on. The Killer Bees, you had been there. You had offensive linemen who were Hall of Fame adjacent kind of players, and Marquise Pouncey, David Castro, at least very, 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 very good players who would speak up when needed. Now the offense is so young. You have a veteran quarterback in Russell Wilson, but he's new to this. You've got Cam Hayward, but he's on the defensive side of things. T.J. Watt, I don't necessarily think, is this outspoken leader kind of guy. You don't have dudes in the locker room policing the locker room. And this is just an educated guess on my part, the way that it used to happen. Now, maybe you just don't have as many good players. I think that's true, too. But I don't think this stuff, this stuff would have flown with those teams that we're talking about. Again, with A.B., he was a different animal because he was so good. But you think James Farrier <laughs> ain't grabbing George Pickens around the neck and Man. saying, buddy, get it together? Man. Right? Man. I mean, the, the policing the locker room should only have to happen one time. And, yeah. I mean, rookie year 2010, different different football. And if somebody, even on the Houston Texans, we didn't even we weren't even good. But if somebody messed up or was acting out, it never got upstairs, first of all. It never got to the coaches. It never got to the front office. The, the players handled it in the locker room. It only happened once. It only, you only get one strike. You only get one strike. And then after that, see ya. The leadership guys, the leadership yeah, one council, time. they're taking care of this is, this is how we This is how we operate. You know, you either fall in line or you're out of here. <laughs> and you're right, though. Like, there, that, I, don't know if that, I don't know if that's every other 31 other teams – that how those locker rooms and the leadership, I think that that has shifted. I don't think that teams and players operate like that anymore. It's a lot more individualized and you know, worrying about other things than football that I don't think people are comfortable with calling other guys out anymore. I don't think it's a Steeler problem. I think it's just a culture sport problem uh, or even in a culture problem. Really, Could be. A young culture problem. Yeah, I mean, and then if I translate that to sports, you think, and I've said this for a long time, but you got high school recruits. They're promised playing time. They're put up on this pedestal. They get to have press conferences. They're picking from hats. You've got coaches in press rooms celebrating when 18-year-old kids are committing to their college. That's going to make guys feel even more important than they are. Yes. And congratulations to the 18-year-olds for working their asses off to get there. That's not what I'm saying. But you are making them feel like they're bigger, at least for that moment, than the team. And now you think about NIL and Mm -hmm. your ability to transfer. And when... Things go wrong. You can just not battle through it. You can go someplace else. And I'm all for player mobility and things of that nature, but I do think there are repercussions, and all that filters up to the NFL. Yep. There's no question about that. Think about the gameplay. Think about the the, the, when we watch on Sundays, does the the quality of the games that we watch, do you think it's as good as it once was about a decade ago? I don't think it is. No. No. And Brady said stuff like that. I mean, if you you have eyes and you've been watching football for a long time, you can absolutely tell that the quality of play is not even near as good as it was, I mean, even six, seven years ago. We blame officials for the flags. A lot of that has to do with poor fundamental play. (laughs) You also can't practice as much as you used to. Tackling's worse than it's ever been. Offensive line play's not very good. Yeah, I'm with you, man. So it isn't just this uniquely Steelers problem, but it is 
a habitual deal here where, like, Deontay Johnson, you talk about back in your day with the Texans, one thing happens and it, it ain't happening again or else you got real issues. Mm-hmm. Deontay Johnson's fighting with Mitch Trubisky two years ago, and then he's fighting with Minka Fitzpatrick, according to reports, and yet he still is on the field in a position to not recover a fumble because he's not working his butt off. Mm-hmm. Like, he He just progressively got worse and worse and worse and i'm sure it was addressed initially Mm -hmm. of course it was that's probably what happened is minka walks up to him and says cut your crap out yep on a couple of occasions he didn't cut the crap out so eventually he gets shipped out of town but if george pickens eventually gets shipped out of town whether it's before this deadline or before next season they're just going to wind up backfilling the roster with another George Pickens because that's the way it goes. That's the way it's always gone around here. And I, I, I really can't believe, and the guy has come under some fire a little bit lately from the bigger stage, from the national media. But like I said before, it usually never got to up top, never got to the coaches whenever you had issues in the locker room or issues with the player. But whenever it did, it got handled. And for Mike Tomlin to be around for so long to see different generations of football and to kind of, you know, embrace all of that for him to let these things go on. Yeah, is absolutely insane to me. It is because that trickles that trickles onto the field. I mean, you watch Broderick Jones last game. It looked like he didn't even know what some of the plays were. I mean, you, you start to wonder really what happens in practice. Like our guys paying attention. Does Mike Tomlin have, you know, a, a real good strong hold on this football team and has he when's the last time he really has because this happens every year it does happen every every year. single year and you would think from you know the experience that he has had with some of the older guys and back in 2008 and the super bowls and stuff like that and you know how guys operate like the farriers and and you know the troy palomalus and uh, you, you would think that he would step in whenever he needed to step in now he might but are is that message getting through Doesn't clearly seem not. like it clearly not I say it's not a uniquely Steelers problem because I just think it is the culture that we're in. And as we've discussed, I do think we see it a little bit more here. I mean, we also analyze this team and we put this team under the microscope and we're not watching the other 31 teams as closely, but it does feel like every single year this happens. And I think the Steelers are in a very odd position with Pickens because he has not lived up to expectation. At times he's been good. He's a highlight real machine, but he's not consistent. But they need him because they don't have any other playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. So you're caught in this bizarre purgatory here where you can't you can't really punish him because you're probably going to score zero points right. offensively. Right. But you have to punish him because it's not going to get better. And so the beat goes on. 